people call me an audiologist. Others call me a hearing nerd. Being human with hearing loss is like my superpower. As a hearing doctor, I get to help people hear their best while learning about the mysteries of hearing. Hello humans, welcome back to Dr. Rose Helps You Here. I'm Stephanie Rose, I'm an audiologist, and today I'm going to show you what I do when your hearing aid stops working. So if you saw my other video for what you do when your hearing aid stops working, first I do all of those things. I change your filter, I check your tubes for moisture, um, and I also change the battery. So. Um, Taking these things all one step further in the hearing aid lab is part of the process to troubleshoot whether or not your hearing aid needs to go out for service. So some of the things that we do first is suction out the device. So I have a fancy needle suctioner machine. Oops. Okay, I'll get a new one. <laughs> I keep my clean tabs in the cabinet. And this is called an Aura Care. It's sort of an ancient machine, but it's good and trusty. So I'll take the hearing aid and I'll suction out all the microphones and the vents and see if I can clear debris that way. Another thing that we'll do is routinely replace tubing for the behind the ear hearing aids. So for this type, we replace tubing because when tubing gets hard, it stops the sound. If there's debris in the tube, it will stop the sound. Um, I also have an array of filters in here for all the different types of hearing aids. Another thing that I wanted to mention is for the battery hearing aids, we have fancy contact sprays to clean the contacts because if they get debris or grease on them from you know fingers uh, touching batteries and batteries touching inside of the little teeth um, that hug the battery, the little metal contacts, sometimes they get dirty and they need to be cleaned. So usually I will spray a Q-tip with the cleaner and then we'll go inside of the device <clears throat> We'll go inside of there. If it's a really small battery cage, sometimes I'll take fluff off of the, the cotton swab and then I'll really get in there and get into those teeth. And you'd be surprised how much debris and dirt comes out of those things. So once that happens, sometimes I'll use this dental tool to increase the um, tension of those battery contacts. So the teeth sometimes get spread apart and then they don't touch the battery. Sometimes a symptom of this is the hearing aid keeps rebooting, so we just hug those little contacts tighter and then it won't reboot. Um, so that is basically what I do for battery troubleshooting, for needle suctioning, um, and then of course I have these other neat tools like vent cleaners, we have an array of brushes and things. Some of the in-the-ear hearing aids do not have filters, they actually have wax Springs, and this is like my last wax spring tool uh, in clinic that can reach into those sound boards and pull out the little spring to be changed. Um, these are way more convenient for the patient because they can do it at home. Now, um, this machine is super vintage, but uh, it, it really does do a great job and it's lasted a long time. It's one of the first machines that had a comparator a comparador is where you could put an in-the-ear hearing aid and then um, like a rick inside of the unit and then play a CD player to compare your old, you know, custom hearing aid to the new fancy receiver and canal hearing aids. So it's a very neat machine and I hope it lasts a long time. Sorry for my crazy hair, I just don't want all my uh, 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 um, particles spraying all over the lab. Now, a long time ago, we used to have a pretty dome for the a vacuum chamber, which we routinely will put hearing aids in to get them really dry, and sometimes it can revive a dead hearing aid, so that's nice. So I went ahead and made my own vacuum uh, chamber lid with some hearing aid goo, and then um, one of the old desiccants for the moisture beads. So, um, so now, and I'm gonna kinda pan down so you can see this. So over here is my vacuum chamber. This is the vacuum chamber here. And, sorry for the trash, um, the hearing aid goes on here and then this will cr 
create a suction. There's a little tiny uh, vacuum tube that's in the middle of this thing. And then when I turn it on, I just flip a switch. And then you can feel this lid go down because it's sucking all the air out of that chamber. So this is a great thing to, do, to have on hand. Um, you definitely should ask if you've accidentally gotten in the shower or if you've dropped your hearing aid in some water. Uh, you wanna ask the center that you go to for your hearing aids if they have a vacuum chamber that they can put it in. I removed the battery, opened the door, set it in there for you know, 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, and then put a new battery in and then try to revive it. Uh, if you do have a water accident, you wanna definitely turn off the hearing aid first um, first thing, turn it off, open that battery door, take the battery out, leave the battery door open, put it in whatever moisture kit you have, or even, uh, you know, a jar of rice, um, uh, like on the top of a bed of rice sealed lid until you can get to the hearing care professional or audiologist. So, um, so that's moisture management. If I can't revive it, then it has to go out to the maker. Uh, the next thing too to just cover, we have a variety of adhesives in audiology and sometimes it's just uh, something that's fallen off the hearing aid that needs to be glued back on like, uh, like a little removal line and I'm sorry there's not a removal, oh there is a removal line on here, I don't know if you can see that little string there, sometimes those fall, sometimes those fall out of the hearing aid and we can glue them back in with some really strong adhesive. So I don't recommend you try any of these things yourself at home. That's why we're the professionals. So come to us, let us fix your hearing aid. This one, I had to write not glue because I've accidentally grabbed it before. Um, this is the unglue. So for people who decide to put super glue on their tubing inside of their ear molds at home, uh, especially during the pandemic, this has actually been kind of a common thing that we're seeing. Um, a little soak of this will help to free up that old tubing from the ear mold so that you can start over. The other thing we use a lot for tubing is thin cement. So you don't want a strong glue, you just want something that's going to position that tube in there and hold it in there pretty well over time for like a three month period. This is lighter glue so it's not going to hold forever and your tube will eventually come out of your ear mold and that's when you want to go visit your audiologist or hearing care professional so that they can um, put a new tube in there with some more thin cement. Uh, I also have some, you know, battery testers and all kinds of different tools in here. I've got clippers, cutters, um, I've got little shot glasses that I like to put the ear molds in with soapy water and then give them a nice uh, a cleaning in my sonic cleaner. Um, and then we, you know, totally blow them dry and then get them all back on the hearing aid. The one thing that I get really excited about that we have that you can't necessarily do at home, and you probably shouldn't, uh, is UV material. So what is UV material? Well, we have it in these little plungers and it's a liquid that you put on the hearing aid for different reasons um, and then you cure it with a UV light, okay? Um, it gets hard after that. It's just like acrylic nails get hard. It comes out as like kind of a liquidy powder, but this stuff is actually pure liquid. Um, so some of the things I use that for is to create a better seal around an in-the-ear hearing aid. So I will apply a little thin, what we call a barber pole, around the canal portion of the in-the-ear hearing aid. We can also do it around the canal portion of an acrylic ear mold and then cure it with the light. So if you cure it with the light, that basically creates more space. So more surface area that will be touching in the canal if someone has lost a little bit of weight and it's just causing a little bit of feedback or perhaps that custom fit just isn't quite right anymore for whatever reason. So that is a great thing to have on hand. It's great to be trained on UV material as an audiologist, a dispenser. Um, because I can help solve problems right here. We don't have to start all over or send the hearing aid out for repair. Um, sometimes it's just a fit issue. So that's a great thing to have on hand and to be trained on. All right, so that's pretty much the conclusion of my video for today. If I think of other things to show you guys in the lab, I definitely will. Thanks for taking a tour with me and thanks so much for watching my videos. Please subscribe. You guys have a great day and stay well out there.